Ladies and gentlemen, our guest tonight is Dane Wigginton. He is the co-founder of geoengineeringwatch.org, the number one site in the field. He's got an incredible background in renewable energy and appeared in both What in the World Are They Spraying and Why in the World Are They Spraying. Dane, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the show. Thanks for addressing this, this most dire issue that most are unaware of. Well, that really raises an important question right there, Dane. Why is it? that this is such an important issue and that people are unaware of it when the data is like right there. And, and I, you know what, I, 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 is, is it, is it really just that the, the possibility of the government that dropped a couple of atom bombs and sprayed radioactive particles in St. Louis and conducted the Tuskegee experiments, is it really such an outlandish idea that this government would also be manipulating the weather? Um, absolutely. It's par for the course, as you just outlined. It's absolutely par for the course. Why would we expect anything else? They're certainly not going to ask our permission. Did they ask anybody's permission to detonate over 1,800 nuclear weapons on planet Earth, blowing up beautiful South Sea islands, moving the inhabitants off, and, and having grand experiments down there? So uh, you're absolutely right. Well, why would we expect anything else? So the, and the fact that mainstream media is bought, sold, and paid for will only report what they're told to report and the fact that you have government agencies that simply have to say, no, we wouldn't do that, as, if, as they said with Agent Orange and 100 other issues, depleted uranium, all of, you know issues you just outlined, uh, a simple denial from the government, and most people uh, are willing to put their heads back in the sand. But this issue and the, gr the gravity of it, the ramifications are so cataclysmic that I believe, based on available data, they will not be able to hide this probably not past the end of this year. The climate is literally imploding. They are ripping holes in the atmosphere with the ionosphere heaters. The geoengineering particulates are decimating the ozone layer. Um, they are literally tearing the climate apart, and I, I, I don't think this lump will fit under the rug past the end of this year. Well, it's kind of out of the bag already. It seems like the problem isn't it coming out as much as the general denial about it. What, what are you suggesting exactly is going to come out? Okay, that's a, that's a fair statement because, yes, it is. For anybody who chooses to do any sort of research, there is a mountain of data that proves really beyond any reasonable doubt that these programs have been going on for a very, very long time. Blue skies are almost non-existent. We have um, countless lab tests from the ground from across the globe. We are being saturated with toxic heavy metals, the exact heavy metals outlined in numerous geoengineering patents, uh, we see global dimming of uh, a statement or uh, a, uh, a condition that many people are unfamiliar with, the term in general. Fully 20% of the sun's direct rays no longer reach the surface of the planet over the last five decades. And, yes, pollution is a part of that, but the biggest part by far appears to be geoengineering particulates. And, again, to give you an idea, the amount of increase in aluminum, for example, in our rainfall in the Pacific Northwest, over about a six-year period from an initial baseline test, which was already very high, of seven parts per billion of aluminum. And uh, first thing I did when that test came back from the state lab was to talk to a hydrogeologist who told me there shouldn't be any aluminum in our rain, especially in a location like this, unless, quote, I live next to an Alcoa factory, which hmm. I don't. I'm in a very filtered location. So from that six parts per billion over a, over a six-year period, we had single rain events escalate as much as to 3,450 parts per billion. That's nearly a 50,000% increase. It's not coming from China, according to CARB, California Air Quality Resource Board. Uh, it's of recent origin. Where is it coming from? It can only be coming from the sky. And in my background in renewable energy, I'm a former Bechtel Power employee. I have a, my home was on the world, world's largest renewable energy magazine. It's my background. I, I lose 20, 30, 40, sometimes 50, 60, 70, 80% of my solar uptake on certain days from these uh, aircraft emitted particulate trails. These are not condensation trails. They're particulate trails. The laws of physics state the only way anything can stay in the air that long, it has to be a particulate. You, you don't walk down the street a, on a cold day when your breath leaves the fog behind you and see a trail of fog for a mile behind you. doesn't happen. can't happen. So, again, these are particulate trails. It's poisoning virtually everything on the ground. There is an absolute mountain of data to back it up. We post that on our website, geoengineeringwatch.org. Uh, anybody who cares to look will not like what they find, but if we don't all stand up and, and start uh, exposing these programs, we're not going to have anything left to salvage very shortly. Now, one of the things that, you know, for me, as, as someone who believes that technology is fundamentally empowering, 
Is there any way that this technology is going to be able to serve humanity? In this case, in many cases, but um, most specifically in this case, geoengineering is anything but a cure and only a curse. And the amount of decimation it is causing could never and has already caused could, cause, could never be quantified. It is, it is shredding the ozone layer. It is completely thwarting the hydrological cycle. It is disrupting the rain cycle around the globe from top to bottom. It's virtually poisoning everything on the ground, which, which means in the case of bioavailable aluminum, it causes organisms to cease uptake of nutrients. And we see in the boreal forests, these are the northern latitude forests, Siberia, the Pacific Northwest, the forests are quite literally dying. The last figures I saw from Alaska's boreal forest, 30% mortality. So these tox this toxic rain comes down. The, the tree roots sense this toxin. They shut down nutrient uptake. So they're dying a slow death. So, yes, the beetles move in and other things begin to happen, but those are, those are symptoms. They're not the ultimate cause. So then you add increased UV, which is ex extremely detriment detrimental to the forest, um, and you add a, a lack of consistent rainfall, uh, you have now warming temperatures everywhere, and I, I'm not an Al Gore fan, I'm not a carbon credits fan, but the fact is the planet is getting warmer and fast. These geoengineering programs can and do create large-scale regional cooling, short-term cooling, at the cost of a much worsened <laughs> overall warming. And so much so hmm. that what we, we see now, we see uh, almost every bit of precipitation uh, happening in the northern hemisphere is artificially ice nucleated. That's a chemical nucleation process that can turn what should have been rain into snow. If it's already cold enough for snow, they can cool those temps down even further. We have the patents for these processes. The Chinese government openly announced they were ice nucleating snowstorms until they did a billion dollars worth of damage to Beijing, in which case, at that point in time, they went underground. But this is the technology's there. The patents are there. We see on the radar uh, rain at 40, 45 degrees, flashing out Weather Channel's new term, changing over to snow, heavy, wet hmm. snow. This is a, you know, if anybody looks at this data, it's the, the data to back up what I'm saying is there. And that's why you have places having 70 degrees one day, snowing at 40, 45 degrees the next, and 72 days later. We're seeing this kind of fluctuations, and this is only possible through... Uh, massive manipulation with geoengineering, artificial ice nucleation, and so forth. Well, before we come back to the idea of, of how widespread this may actually be, is there any way with any of the technologies of manipulating the weather that have no chemical negative impacts on the environment? None I know of. And just simple logic would, would should make clear to people that if rain is induced in one place, even if there was a non-toxic way to do this, right. if rain is made to fall in one location, obviously it's not going to end up somewhere else. And in the case of geoengineering, for example, we see massive blanket spraying. Uh, we post satellite-dated imagery of this, by the way. I'm not shooting from the hip. We post it on geoengineeringwatch.org uh, frequently. So we see massive blanket spraying of the eastern Pacific. This thwarts the hydrological cycle, and this is not seeding to make it rain. Saturating the atmosphere with too many particulates reduces rainfall overall in whatever region this occurs, mm. causing, causing that moisture to migrate elsewhere. So what do we see? We see the U.S. under protracted drought in most locations, and we see parts of Europe mm. getting, re getting record rain. Mm-hmm. These dots all fit, and it's, uh, again, geoengineering is the single greatest threat, I believe, after a decade of research in, on this issue, the single greatest threat to our planet and all that lives short of nuclear catastrophe. So, Okay, well, hold, hold on, though. Even, hold on, just to put that in proper context, even... Would, would it even be possible then, even given the environmental detriments, the, the, the pollution aspect of this and the distortion aspect of this, isn't it possible that maybe preventing a, a hurricane from making landfall on a city or preventing a, a blizzard from striking a vulnerable area or something like that, if it was applied in the open and judiciously, that there might be some way that this could be a, a, a positive force? It's a fair question, but I think not for many reasons. The, the only toxic or the only elements they've come up with so far, for example, in the case of hurricanes, you have a, a substance called dynamat, 
which is a patented hurricane suppression suppressant. And there are always consequences for tampering with the natural systems. And again, these these systems which help rejuvenate ozone, cyclonic rotation does. Um, you have uh, all elements involved that we know of have a degree of toxicity and envir- a neg- negative environmental effects. Hurricanes create ocean mixing of the waters. I mean, this is these systems are so incredibly complex that you can't just keep throwing wrenches into them. You can't do that. And again, the the materials we're talking about, and I, I've spoken to the geoengineers face to face. Um, David Keith on the record, and this is on Michael Murphy's film, What in the World Are They Spraying, mm-hmm. uh, where Keith admits, after a three-hour symposium with David Keith, uh, talking about the benefits of using aluminum nanoparticles because they have a low coagulation rate and a high albedo. But at the end, when I asked David Keith, has any study been done whatsoever, human toxicity, environmental toxicity, anything, after trying to dodge the question and saying basically there's so much stuff in the atmosphere a little more won't hurt, um, his final answer was no. Have we done studies? No. Could terrible things happen tomorrow? We don't know. And what kind of a cavalier attitude is that for scientists? It's just like detonating nuclear bombs and having no idea what the fallout's going to be. And that's that's the attitude these guys have. And we see the fallout now is absolutely cataclysmic. The boreal forests, again, are not a carbon sink anymore. They are carbon source. They are literally dying. Global oxygen content is plummeting. People don't know this. Uh, I mean, our oxygen content is dropping radically because the lungs of the forest are being poisoned and the hydrological cycle again. And, I mean, there is there is virtually no positive in this except for those doing it who can, uh, for their, their, their various means of control, being Monsanto with their drought-resistant, mm-hmm. aluminum-resistant seeds, or their their vain and, and very destructive attempt to trying to trying to keep certain climate feedback loops there is a weather element aspect of this. There are some people that have theory of much more diabolical agendas here, and we could speculate on that and and um, and so forth. But clearly, uh, there is a very strong atmospheric manipulation component, and they are they are paradoxically trying to keep, I believe, a huge aspect of the geoengineering programs. They are trying to keep uh, very lethal climate feedback loops from triggering, but those loops have already triggered, and the more they spray. The, the more fuel they add to the fire, and that's the that's the paradox here. They're painting us further into the corner every day. The more they spray, the more they have to spray, and it's all making it worse. Hmm. So if there comes a certain breaking point, I don't know how you would describe that, but it, would the atmosphere eventually recover and, and find a, a, its old equilibrium? Fair question. Let me put that into context. And one of the one of the feedback loops I'm talking about appears to have already been triggered. This is methane mass expulsion. And and people can look this up. I, I don't want anybody to believe a word I'm saying. Um, this is hard research data. They can look up Arctic methane emergency. And you've had methane releasing for a number of years around the globe. In fact, in the Bermuda Triangle, the ship sinkings are largely attributed to methane release. When a field of methane releases from the seafloor, this is frozen methane hydrates. It's stored methane. It aerates the ocean like a bottle of champagne. Ships have no buoyancy. They go down. So it's not aliens. It's methane. Same with the planes overhead. The methane can kill a piston-driven engine. So we've had this release happening for a very long time, but now you have absolutely massive reservoirs in the Arctic that are releasing. And the satellite methane data imagery shows massive saturation occurring right now, clear into the southern hemisphere, uh, methane over a 10-year time horizon is 100 times more potent than CO2. This is a global game-changing event. So to get back to your original question of could the, could the Earth find equilibrium, what has already been triggered based on previous methane events, like the PETM event 55 million years ago, Paleocene, Eocene, Thermal Maximum, equilibrium periods in the range of 10 to 30, 40 million years. Uh, so... We're not talking about something that's going to right itself. We have already, we've already signed on for a completely different planet. But if the Earth is not allowed to respond and, and its natural systems are continued to be thwarted, uh, I believe our chances are uh, almost nil. And uh, that's how serious I think this issue is. Hmm. Well, hopefully by, a- hopefully by then we'll all be able to 3D print our own rocket ships and find new planets. But it seems like that might give us a little... A uh, little little reason to hurry, try to hurry up that process. Well, again, you know, this is not a battle I wanted. 
in any way, shape, or form. I, I'm not a political person. I'm not an activist. I, but I simply, um, after studying this issue to a great degree, the gravity of it became so apparent that uh, unless or until these programs are stopped, my life has been on hold, and and uh, I, I just simply see no other option. And and again, if people consider things like this. The species extinction rate today, and, and I'm leading this back to geoengineering, certainly we've not been kind to our planet. We have a, a, a lot of uh, things to atone for there. But the species extinction rate today is now thought to be approaching 200 a day, 200 species a day. It is uh, now thought to be reaching something in the range of 10,000 times natural variability. We are in the sixth great mass ex extinction today. 70 to 80 percent of that is thought to be fungally related, plant and animal. And the geoengineering particulates, because they block the sun, because they're tiny platforms for fungal to proliferate on, because they poison the soils, eliminating the natural microbes, thus the fungus moves in, the greatest single factor in this extinction appears to be geoengineering. And so, and, it, and this is data people can look up as far as the, the extinction rates I, I'm speaking about. So. Again, uh, the gravity of this issue is just simply uh, makes it a priority over all other issues, that if this issue is not dealt with, nothing else will matter. And it's, it is that serious. And, yes, the, the, the nuclear issue is very serious and the amount of nuclear warheads we have and, and all this, but I don't know what we can do about that at this point. Let's hope they don't go off. But the geoengineering issue is happening 24-7. Every breath we take, these particulates are entering through our lung lining, straight into our bloodstream, slowly shutting down our organism. And, and again, uh, what could be a greater priority? I, I don't know. Well, to get back to your original point that we are getting, hopefully, near a, a breaking point in terms of the public's understanding of what's going on, uh, let me first ask you to, to just to give a sense of scale to this, because it, when I hear the way that you're describing it, you know the term. I, I, it's so nebulous. You know, is it? I, I I know from my experience where I've seen chemtrails in New Mexico, and especially I don't know if, what, you know, how much of a particular hotbed Phoenix is, but oh my God, the air there is disgusting, and there are chemtrails. It seems uh, all the time that you can there are photographs of. I mean, it's it's. I, I I'm and I'm shocked every time I hear about this. I'm shocked that you could do this once. That the government or, or whoever's doing this, you know, they could do it once in the, over a town and people could take pictures and have multiple witnesses and see all that and not come to demand like, hey, where the hell did this crap come from? Like, what is going on? Just to, to just that, that people, that Americans will go, oh, eh, there's oh, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Well, not not affecting me. And they move on. It's it's mind blowing. But I, I for me, as someone who. You know, when you describe it in scientific terms, can't get a sense of the scale. Let me let me put it in in, in these terms, or and, and maybe ask you as as a matter of like um a, fa a multiple factor, how much more spraying do you think is going on? So like back to my original bad question, right? If if this technology had the potential for for good, if they figured out a way that it was clean, or or maybe the the pollution risk, uh, you know, outweighed, was, was outweighed by the benefits of preventing a couple of storms. And, you know, it was being used very sparingly and, you know, just maybe, maybe a few times per year in the United States around major storms, like literally less than half a dozen and, you know, and just enough to, to alter the landfall of a hurricane or the intensity of a storm. If that's like a, a, a unit of one amount, if that's like what it could be hypothetically, I'm not, I'm not trying to go back and say that it is, but if that's like, uh, you know, a, a, a one on the scale of, you know, how, how much is being sprayed, how many, many more, how many, many more times quantity wise, uh, you know, of, of, of mass of, of particulates are actually being sprayed in your opinion? I understand your question. A thousand. A thousand. Now, that much more. If you if you if you list, if you just use as an example six six weather events annually sure. be altered, then annually I would say you can you can multiply that by a thousand. There is nothing left untainted for the hydrological cycle on our planet. All is tainted. Uh, it doesn't matter if you look up and see a blue sky above you, which is, is an extreme rarity anywhere these days. But when they are affecting the weather patterns at their source, then they are affecting everything downstream. Now, 
On, th on this, to add a little more credence to this too, the, now, these programs, because they affect wind patterns, and that science is very clear. People can look this up. I don't want anybody to believe me. Again, you can look up geoengineering effects, uh, wind and rain, and you'll find a mountain of data. Now, much of this data does not admit these programs are going on. It's the massive elephant in the room, and I feel just like you. I relate to everything you're saying that how can people hmm. not see this? Does their, do their heads have to be on fire? I, I don't understand. But um, bottom line is we know it affects wind patterns. We know affecting wind patterns then subsequently affects ocean patterns. We know now that there are ocean currents delivering warm water straight into the Arctic. Didn't happen before. We know that the Arctic ice cap, not Antarctica, but the Arctic, almost completely imploded this year. The mass, the mass of the ice cap being less than one-fifth of what it was 20 years ago. And you'll hear people jump up and down and saying, no, no, the ice caps are getting bigger. That's baloney. There's a very small uh, section of sea ice in Antarctica, very small, that happens to have grown some. We believe that from artificial ice nucleation and warmer temperatures. If people understood atmospheric science... If it's too cold, you have no precipitation. There's places on Antarctica that haven't seen precipitation for hundreds of years because it's too cold. They're seeing precipitation now. Why? Because it's warmer, because the atmosphere is warm enough to carry moisture now where it wasn't before, and they're ice nucleating that moisture to make sure something falls. So there's one tiny little patch of ice in Antarctica, sea ice, that's getting slightly bigger, while the land-based ice, which is the majority of the ice, is getting smaller for sure, and we have the Arctic ice, which is imploding. So back to the geoengineering, not only does it, shred the ozone layer and the harp uh, people, many people don't know what harp is it's an ionosphere heater they're massively powerful uh, almost 2 billion watts uh, radio frequency transmitters that they're blasting this frequency into the ionosphere which is literally ripping it apart there's uh, we think as many as 18 of these facilities around the globe so they're manipulating the jet stream ripping it apart they're spraying uh, which the particulates, again, altering wind patterns, which alters ocean currents. Now those ocean currents have helped to trigger methane hydrate release in the Arctic. And the methane release alone, I don't care if anything else is in this equation, the methane release alone is a global game-changing event that now cannot be turned off. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. Mm. They know it. I believe they didn't bargain for this. I believe the power structure now is alarmed out of their socks. They're throwing everything they can at this, and everything they do will only make it worse. They're, they're keeping a lid on a boiling kettle while they're stoking the fire underneath, and that simply is the recipe for total disaster, and that's exactly where we're headed. In fact, I'll put this into context. We are on track right now because of geoengineering for something called Venus syndrome. That term is quite self-explanatory. It is not a metaphor. It is a scientific scenario. And that is the track we are on. And if geoengineering does not stop, uh, I believe that's exactly where we're going to end up. Daryl, do you have any questions or comments I from the do. chat? Yes, we have actually two questions from a guy by the name of Dan Poor. He wants to know, are they using aluminum to reflect light towards the Earth or out towards outer space? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry if I understand the I, question. Are they use, using aluminum for that purpose? Correct. Uh, that is the stated purpose, Yes to increase the Earth's albedo, albedo meaning the Earth's re reflectivity, uh, to try to uh, slow global warming. But in fact, again, you don't get something for nothing in nature. And in this case, uh, the consequences are far worse uh, than the supposed cure. So um, although they are deflecting some of the sun's thermal energy because they're shredding the ozone layer, uh, it actually is decreasing our natural protection while trapping even more radiant heat than they deflect. It's a net negative solution at the cost of poisoning everything on the ground. So scientists live in bubbles. I know a number of them, and uh, they only think about their, only, their, their little experiment and not of the consequences. Otherwise, mm -hmm. why would they detonate 1,800 nuclear bombs? All of us, including every scientist and every power broker that was involved, have strontium-90 in our bones because of this. Why would they do this knowing the consequences? Because they can. Because they don't think about the consequences. Because we're not dealing with reason and sanity here. We are not. So, uh, and again, if this could be brought out in the open, if, if geoengineering could be brought in the open, it would at least change the flavor of what we face because it's a very uniting cause. I've lectured from the Green Party to the Tea Party. Nobody wants to be sprayed like a rat. Again, this is not about politics. It's about poisoning every breath we take, every breath our children take, 
So it's a very uniting issue, and if people all helped carry this torch, we would bring this out in the open. And, in fact, when I said that lumps getting too big to fit under the rug, starting the 28th of this month, now the Weather Channel, which is nothing but paid propaganda to help hide these programs, hmm. they lie their butts off. Now they're doing a series called Hacking the Planet. Guess what it's about? Geoengineering. Because so they got to get out front with the positive spin at this point, right? They're trying to, but I, they're way behind too the late. curve. Too late. I don't care how much lipstick they put on this pig, it's not going to fly. People don't want to be sprayed like rats. They're not going to go for these natural systems being messed with. They Now they know they're, they've been lied to horrifically. So uh, I don't think the pig's going to fly, but they're going to try. Daryl? Yeah, cool. Uh, two more questions. The next one will be from Dan again. He wants to know if they're trying to prevent global warming or cause the push through their green policies. Well, you know, uh, both. Both. And, and again, although there's many layers to this onion, I, I mean, there's military strategic purposes, there's uh, multinational corporate uh, profit purposes, you know, there, there's too many layers of this onion to, to really know or understand completely. There may, in fact, be eugenics purposes to this, um, but there are those who think they're working on this and, and believe they're working on this solely to try to slow runaway global warming, but it's cutting off one's nose despite one's face. And again, we know that just on that issue alone, just on the subject of anthropogenic global warming, geoengineering overall does far more harm than good. And that is clear at this point. We have six decades of weather manipulation that show clearly it is not helping. It is, it is hurting horrifically. So, uh, yes, that is the stated purpose, stated purpose on a multitude of patents. Um, that will be the spin they try to put on this, that uh, don't, oh, the climate is, in fact, bad. Uh, but uh, don't worry, we can fix it. But we have a, more than enough data to say that geoengineering appears to be the largest single causal factor for the climate disruption we have. It is not a cure. It is a curse. It is it is the biggest part of the problem. We have just time for one more question from the chat, Daryl. Yes, if the people want to know how to get in contact with you to spread this message, how can they get in contact with you, sir? Geoengineeringwatch.org under the contact section, uh, we can take questions there. We try to answer everything we can. Uh, that's a good source of data, and everybody can help spread this message. Educate yourself. Get some good, credible data. Get a copy of Michael Murphy's film, What in the World Are They Spraying, or Why in the World Are They Spraying. Use that to educate people. Don't just point at this guy and rant. That doesn't help. Awesome. Thank you for your time. Well, Mr. Wigginson, I just have one last question, then. If, if you see this coming out in in the near future, what's that going to look like? Are people, is, what is, is there a smoking gun? Is, are we going to, is someone going to come out with a confession and say, we've been doing this for our special interests in government and, and for c corporations like Monsanto? Or is, is the, is the data already out there? Are you expecting some, some acceptance of this? There's just some, some critical mass tipping point that we're going to get to where, you know, because the Weather Channel is covering it, now it's going to be, that much less deniable? I don't think they can hide the methane mass expulsion, and that is the catalyst that will bring this out. And they may, in fact, try to say, well, we haven't been doing this, but we need to do it now because uh, of this event happening. But, again, I think there's far too much data uh, for them to be able to spin it that way effectively, so I think the game is changing in ways they can't control. The Arctic ice cap has not melted for at least 3 million years and probably more like 13 million certainly we can connect that dot to these programs. So, uh, again, what we face right now is changing our reality by the day. I think that will make it impossible for them to hide this, and it's imperative that everybody helps us get the word out on these programs so that they cannot spin it in a way where it will be accepted, period. It needs to stop, or, or I think we have little to no chance, literally. Absolutely. Dane, thank you so much for calling in. Really appreciate it. Dane Wigington, geoengineeringwatch.org. Please check it out. Educate yourself. Inform others, share that link. The obvious stuff that is making people go, what the fuck is happening here? There's libertarians about the sanctity of the individual. This is disorderly conduct. 